Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be doing another tier list video and <clears throat> it's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, and for no particular reason as well, the last one's got great feedback and great view viewership and I just really haven't gotten around to making another one. However, I am uh, currently playing a 1v1 arena tournament called Clown Cup 3. I have uh, won my first round and I made it to uh, you know the quarterfinals and so I figured uh, I might as well just come out with an arena tier list um, for you guys to enjoy and for me to actually think about the civs and what I... Uh, you know what I feel is best and what I think is you know good and, and, and whatnot and just give some discussion going there uh, So I, I you know as usual, this is just my personal list. I've had my uh, You know my own opinions from my limited experience I'm not the most experienced arena player and I do have my preferred style of playing the map which might not be uh, You know the same style as as you as you guys or as other top arena players So just definitely keep that in mind that I do have my own biases and especially when it's with this map because I just don't play it that often so uh you know without further ado let's just hop right into it i will be using all six tiers here starting from s to f as usual it's just my opinion and uh, uh and feel free to disagree in fact i encourage you guys to let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh and then each sieve within the tier uh will not be better than another sieve with you know within that same tier um so i'm not gonna order them uh within the tier i'm just gonna go through them alphabetically for s and then uh, all the s tiers i think are better than the a tiers and so on and so forth but every save within the S is at the same level, uh, unless I otherwise specify. All right, so let's get started here. Enough talking. Uh, I'm going to have Aztecs at S tier. It's no surprise Aztecs makes it to another 1v1 S tier. Um, the Civ just has way too strong an economy and way too versatile of a kit. So the reason why they're strong on Arena in particular is because they have one of the best Monk Rushes in the game. Um, and by Monk Rush, I mean at any point in the game. Castle Age Monk Rush, Imperial Age Monk Rush, they have... Uh, all, all the techs available and their monks get an extra plus 5 HP based on every tech you do So it's actually just very strong and uh, kind of obnoxious to deal with it sometimes So uh, definitely very strong uh, in monk options and then they'll have good, good economy uh, Eagles is definitely a good choice here and there uh, Atlato skirmishers and Garland War pikemen are really uh, strong for late game uh, And then their siege is pretty good as well. They have siege onagers and siege uh, rams so uh, literally no complaints there for Aztecs, so they just have great matchups all around. Definitely an S tier for me. The next save I have in the S tier is going to be the Britons. So uh, Britons comes uh, once again to another S tier. Uh, again, these uh, these one v one are pretty dominant across all settings. The reason why Britons is really strong on Arena, though, uh, in particular, is because they have they have really cheap town centers, and they actually have two bonuses for the early game. So they have faster sheep gathering, which lets you click up a little bit faster. And then they also get cheaper town centers. So these two in combinations, in combination with each other, let you get a really smooth fast castle into boom. So you can probably do like fast castle, drop two town centers right away, and you can still make some scouts or some crossbows to contest the relics. Like you can do like boom and contesting the relics at the same time with Britain. It's just such a strong civilization. Uh, and then uh, when you transition into the imperial competition, they have great units with the longbowman or the arbalest with a ton of range. Uh, and then with Halb fully upgraded to counter any cavalry sieve, and then the Warwolf Trebs to counter, uh, you know, ranged units to counter other Trebs to win those Treb Wars. Britons is just all around such a strong civilization, and it's, you know, for that reason why it's S tier. Uh, they even have decent light cav for the late game as well, uh, and fully upgraded champions uh, as well, so they have just so many options. Uh, the next one is a little bit of an interesting one. So it's not a sieve that you think about when you think of a land map, but it's actually going to be the Malay. Uh, yeah, shout out to Lohab for this one. Uh, Malay is just uh, just beastly on Arena. So the, the only bonus that really comes into play is uh, is the fact that they actually get... Um, not, I'm gonna, I shouldn't say the only bonus, but the main bonus is the fact that they can advance to the ages faster. This lets them do a couple unique things. It lets, it lets you go with a fast feudal age with Malay, you something like 23 or 20, uh, 22 or 23 pop. And you go for Feudal Age, you get both Eco Upgrades, Double Bit Axe and Horse Collar. And you get to do like a Feudal Boom, make like 12 farms and, you know, just, um, uh, you know, set up a regular Feudal Economy. And then click up the Castle. You'll get the Castle around 16, 1630 uh, in game time, which is going to be like one minute later than another Civilization. And then you can have a much stronger Economy, which then lets you do uh, a Boom and Contest the Relics with some sort of like Light Cav. Uh, options and then you know get a couple of town centers behind us not to mention they have great monks and they have a lot of fast and potential because uh, once again they're they advance with the ages so fast so fast and potential great boom uh, and then lastly 
uh, it's just the fact that they um, <clears throat> it's just the fact that they have the cheap uh, two handed swordsmen, the no the no gold two handed swordsmen, and the cheap elephants that makes them really strong in the late game as well, giving them a lot more options. All right, then my last sieve is actually it's a weird one. It's not it's not it's, okay. It's two ins. <laughs> it's two ins. Um, two ins is generally a, a really bad one v one sieve if you consider overall. However. On Arena, it's very unique. Arena, and I, I suppose Black Forest as well, but Arena especially, very unique situation, and they're actually S tier. Now, on a recent patch, I think two patches ago, Teutons got a buff on their cavalry. Their cavalry gets now plus one armor in uh, in Castle Age, and then another plus one armor in Imperial Age for a total of plus two melee armor on their infantry and cavalry units. What this does for them on Arena is it, met, it lets them easily win the scout wars in castle age when it comes to fighting for the relics so having the extra plus one pierce armor means you're going to win most 1v1 scout wars in the castle age in the early castle age when you're fighting for the relics furthermore you also have the two in uh conversion resistance bonus so you don't really uh get converted by monks easily so those two bonuses in conjunction lets you win most uh, scout monk wars to get those relics so two wins you know by default have a really good advantage there obviously you're missing light cap which is kind of a you know a downside but uh, uh you know I, I think you're compensating enough with the other two bonuses for that and then the last thing and i think the most important is just their beast economy uh into beast options like they have very cheap farms obviously which is just great for a pure boom lets you get up more town centers lets you easily afford villager production and then their options in late game are quite strong they have like fully upgraded monks or you know most of the techs they have siege onager bombard cannons they have hand cannons they have teutonic knights which are actually pretty good on arena you know in certain situations they have fully upgraded halberdier paladin and halberdier and paladin are actually stronger uh because they have the extra melee armor obviously missing missing husbandry on paladin is not great but again arena so mobility is not as much of an issue as something like arabia uh, and then uh, they also get crenellations on their castles, so they get uh, they can potentially counter bomber cannon sieves. So all of those options together just make two in such a great civilization to get the relics, push and hold the position because of the, such the, you know their strong, powerful, slow army, and then just push from there. Basically, it's just it's 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 insane. It's it's so strong. Uh, really hard to counter. So that's it going to be it for my S tier civilizations. Um, for those of you who might be watching a lot of Viper recently, I know he, he likes to say that Vietnamese is probably the best 1v1, uh, 1v1 Arena Civ. Personally, I, I, I can see the argument for sure. I'm not going to go against it. I don't think my Arena experience is, is, is good enough to go against it. But just in my personal experience, I feel like those four civs generally uh, do a better job than Vietnamese. Um, doesn't mean Vietnamese can't beat them. In fact, I do think Vietnamese has a decent matchup or something like Britain's uh, or maybe Malay. Um, but, uh, but I, I just feel like these sieves are generally a little bit stronger. Uh, all right. So going on to the eighth year, um, we have Byzantines to start us off. Yeah. Byzantines to start us off. Byzantine is actually a really strong civilization. Um, and it, honestly, it's in the right hands. It can be even an, an S tier sieve. Um, it has counters to everything. Like it has cheap skirmishers, cheap halberdier, cheap camels. So right away you counter so many things with those. Uh, you get f cheaper Imperial Age, which lets you go for some fast sim shenanigans or just a good boom into a cheaper Imperial Age, saving you resources. Um, you have really good monks, you have bombard cannons. And one thing that comes in clutch for Byzantine uh, is their extra HP on the castles. Now, extra HP on the castles makes it just so strong to hold positions and win those early imp treb wars. Um, and, you know, all of these bonuses kind of come in at the same time, like the faster imp into the maybe a forward castle that has a lot of HP can be pretty deadly with Byzantines, uh, and uh, they have a lot of cheap options to combine it with. And also having the Cataphract Unique Unit to go for in the late game is also a really nice, uh, you know, really nice tool to have to counter a lot of those infantry civilizations, like maybe, let's say Aztecs, Goths, or whatever else comes to mind. Maybe Franks throwing Axemen, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, okay, so next up is going to be the Cumans. Uh, Cumans is another one I'm a bit conflicted on. So. I do think the Cumin Feudal Boom is very strong. It's hard to punish because you have the stone wall set up. It's also uh, really, uh, really just strong because you're getting that early village lead. And then you can transpose to some crazy castle age. Like, I feel like they're not very, like, I feel like they haven't been defined in the meta. I don't have enough games on them to really see how powerful they are. But from what, what I can already see, I can, I can just feel like it's super strong. Like you get a good lead of villas going into the castle age. 
And then in the cast stage, you have the options to go Kipchucks. You have the option to add in like two more TCs, go up to four town centers and go for a massive boom into something like Paladin, Siege Ram. They even have Siege Onagers. Um, their monks are pretty trash. Uh, as far as I can remember, they lost Redemption recently. Um, but, uh, but you know, overall, they have so many good options. And even, that's just in Pure Lich. You can even go for Capram and Castlage now uh, with some like crazy uh, Light Cav kind of spam. Go up to like Kipchucks, Light Cavs, Capram and Castlage, 200 pop and try to wipe out your opponents. Um, so they have like a lot of interesting options. I do say, I will say though, that Cumans might fall off a little bit, a little bit in late game versus some civilizations. However, I feel like if you get to Kipchucks, as your main unit, even their Imperial Age is very solid. Like Kipchak is, is actually a pretty beastly unit right now. So uh, honestly, A tier, maybe even S tier for Cumans. I, I can see the argument, but I'm going to leave it for A tier, mostly because I haven't tested them enough. Uh, next up, I've got Franks. Um, I think Franks is actually a, a really interesting one, and I have tested it a couple times recently. Uh, Doubt told me about it. He said that some of the uh, arena clowns, as we call them, some of these arena players are putting a lot of emphasis on Franks. Uh, and and it, for good reason. So I tried them out a couple of times and uh, I even told Delta, I was like, yo, this div is really good. Uh, and well, basically they have like five bonuses that are used in like every game. Hear me out. So extra HP on the, on the, on the scouts that comes in Feudal Age and that lets you in Castle Age contest the relics. So it helps you win Scout Wars. Uh, and, and then you also have the Berry bonus, which is just a great economy bonus that's you up faster. So you have a good eco bonus, good military bonus in Castle Age, in early castle. Uh, and then you also get both farm upgrades for free, which lets you, which really helps your early boom. So that lets you get a couple of town centers and lets you contest the relics at the same time because you have that little bit of extra uh, resource saving and you know boost the economy. Uh, and then uh, the last thing, so that's already like what is that? Four bonuses we used. No, I think that's three bonuses that we used. Then they have the cheaper castles that comes in later on. So they have cheaper castles that you're able to place uh, forward or defensively. Uh, and then even like after that, they have. Pretty solid options. Like they have obviously the Paladin that they can go for. They have Throwing Axemen, which counters a lot of trash, counters Halberdiers. And then they have Bombard Cannon. Their monks are nothing special, but you know, I, I think they have enough options that makes them that makes them pretty viable in, in a lot of situations, but mostly just a powerhouse and a very consistent powerhouse. Because once again, you're using all the bonuses basically every game every game just by playing Franks. So uh, it just feels like a very smooth civ overall. Okay, the next save on the list here is gonna be the Khmer. Uh, I think Khmer, honestly, they lost Bomber Cannons recently and they got a small nerf to their, to their farms, very small, mind you. Uh, but I just feel like before that, I might have considered them an S tier. Now, nowadays, I just feel like they struggle a little bit with uh, with Halb Onager. Um, something I was speaking about uh, with Modri, actually, um, and he was telling me that Khmer might be a little bit overrated right now uh, because they have obviously a really good economy and a smooth build. Um, obviously, you don't need to build a market or a blacksmith or any feudal buildings to get up to the castle age. And if you want to contest the relics, you can go straight for a stable instead of barracks and stable like a normal sip. So you save a lot of resources in the early game, and then they have a great boom after that. But you know the fact that they they lost bomber cannon and they don't have redemption monks. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't have redemption monks. Might be wrong on that one. I know they don't have redemption plus three monks. One of the upgrades is missing. They have a hard time countering onagers. Uh, Halb onager is a really good combination that works well against Khmer. And, uh, and they didn't really have that much time to get into their really strong combination. Like, Ballista Elephants is going to be really hard to get to in Orange V1 Arena. Uh, Scorpions might be a bit easier to get to, but Scorpions kind of die to Onagers and Bomber Cannons most of the time. Uh, and then their Elephants just get countered by Halbs most of the time as well. So uh, like a lot of the powerful Khmer options in late game usually get countered pretty easily. They still have access to Hussar, Siege Ram, Scorpions, uh, Hand Cannons, and even Arbless fully upgraded, just missing Thumb Ring. These are all solid options, so I definitely think there's some merit to Khmer, but I just don't think they're as strong uh, and uh, S tier anymore. But maybe with Bomber Cannon, uh, they might be uh, S tier. Uh, who knows? But for, for now, A tier I think is fine for them. Uh, next up, I'm going to actually put Lithuanians here. Uh, Lithuanians are... <sighs> Lithuanians are solid, man. They're, they're sick. So where do I start with the Civ? Okay, um, I mean, right off the bat, they have faster uh, skirmishers and halberdiers um, with, with also unique upgrade tower shields that gives them a bonus uh, pierce armor. So uh, that just makes the late game so strong and makes their, uh, you know, their trash game, you know, just <laughs> pretty on point. Uh, but then also they, they, they have a really easy time contesting the relics because they start with 150 extra food. Not like an easy time, but they have an advantage for it. And once they get relics, like let's say get two or three relics, for the rest of the game, your heavy cav will have an extra little bit of attack. 
Um, and this doesn't really matter that much with Cavalier and Paladin, although it's a nice boost, but it really helps with their Lightus because their Lightus only costs 50 gold. So you're able to really easily produce a lot of Lightus that get this attack boost and are fully upgraded and only cost 50 gold once again. And are really cheap to upgrade. Like the Elite Upgrade of Lightus doesn't cost that much. So it's less than Paladin. So it's just all those kind of bonuses combined, like picking up a couple relics, then having the lightest, then having really nice trash, just makes them a really smooth uh, late like late game sieve. Uh, and it just it just feels really powerful. And then if you combine that with a really good monk options as well, I think they have fully upgraded full full tech tree with monks. I don't know, I don't know if they're missing any upgrades. And I know that their team bonus is that their monks um, their monasteries work 20% faster. So um, they, they have really good monks, really good trash, and really good gold units. It's just hard to not do well with, with Lithuanians. They also get bomber towers and bomber cannons uh, and hand cannons. They get full gunpowder as well. So just another extra, uh, you know, extra bit of options. And they also get fully upgraded Hussar. Again, it, this set feels like it has everything. The only reason it's not S tier is I feel like it, it's lacking like a beast eco bonus that some of the S tier sips have. So... Um, that's like the only reason there, I, I, I would say, to be honest. Okay, moving swiftly along here. I don't know if I'm taking too long. I think I am. I'm already 16 minutes in. Okay, I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit. Uh, next up, we have uh, the Slavs. So Slavs is my next uh, eighth year sieve. Really good economy. Um, easy time contesting the relics with just scouts with good farms behind it. And um, you're saving a little bit of pop, a little bit of wood on the pop space, I suppose, um, you know. Uh, your your military buildings count as houses basically so save a little bit of it early on although it's not that big a deal uh, and then the late game they have cheaper siege they have halberdiers um, with the drushina that's really powerful um, and they're you know overall just a decent uh, decent halb siege civilization with a good economy behind it as well and then they have the boyars as a as a, as a situational like you know, option in, in the toolbox. So slabs are overall pretty solid. Nothing too special, but uh, just overall a, a solid civilization. Uh, next up, one of my one of my personal favorites. I, I love Turks. Honestly, if I had to play, if I had to play a tournament final versus Britons in a, in a tournament with like 50k prize pool on the line, I would definitely pick Turks. No promises that I'd win, but I'd definitely pick them. Um, but yeah, okay. In all seriousness though, Turks have a lot of really good things going for them. So they obviously have the cheesy fast tip build that I've showcased on the uh, on the channel a couple of times. This build is probably not great for tournaments, but it's definitely something that could catch your opponent off guard. So definitely feel free to mess around with it. Uh, but even just the Turk boom, so they get free light cap, which helps you contest the relics. It's one of the better bonuses to contest the relics. Such a big spike there. Uh, they also get Janissaries. So Janissaries are really strong for castlage potential. Uh, with those guys, it's quite good, especially in certain matchups uh, that have trouble dealing with them. Um, uh, and then they also, you know, going into late game, have great cab archers, have siege rams, and get free hussars. So you get to go into a heavy cab archer, hussar, siege ram composition very quickly because you're getting uh, free chemistry and free hussars. So it's great uh, resources saved and just momentum uh, with that. Uh, and then they also get really strong bomber towers, uh, which helps with the map control and bomber cannons. So overall with Turks, you're just looking at uh, a lot of free upgrades at the right time and a lot of powerful late game options. So I think with Turks, if you're able to pick up three to four relics, that Civ can be really, really strong in, in, in the late game. So definitely keep an eye on them. Obviously they don't have a lot of trash, but Arena is one of those maps where if you just maintain a 40 gold army, like 40 cab archers and just never lose them, you never really need to replenish them. You can just spam Hussar with your food and you have like unlimited wood. So you can always sell a lot of that and keep the gold pretty high. So that's not too bad. Uh, and then my last eight tier sieve here is going to be the Vietnamese. So yeah, like, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit, a little bit sketchy there. It wants to go into the S tier, but I don't know. I, I couldn't really justify S tier because I thought of the matchups of, of Vietnamese versus, you know, the S tier civilizations. And I just felt like versus Teutons, they probably have a hard time. Versus Aztecs, they probably have a hard time. Atlato skirmishers with like eco of Aztecs with monks, they can run into some problems. And then with Britons, they probably have a little bit of a hard time as well. Like, I, I agree it's a decent matchup, but if Britons get to Longbows and and Oninger, it can be pretty tricky for Vietnamese to deal with that, honestly. So, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like they have a good economy. They have really good trash units. The Rattan Archer is a really good option uh, as well. Um, and, and they also have Elephants and pretty up well upgraded light caps. So, um, overall, Vietnamese are decent but uh, and, and feel very smooth, by the way. But I just, and they probably get really good matchups versus the A tier sieves. I just don't feel like they're quite S tier. But definitely a dangerous sieve and one to look out for. 
Um, so that's Vietnamese here. And that's going to round it, round it out for my A tier civs. So if you take a look, S tier civs are the ones with great economy, great units, and great power spikes. A tiers usually have a couple of those things, either great economy or great units, but are lacking in some departments. Moving down onto the B tier, you're going to see a lot of civs with you know, either really good economies or really good units. But again, just missing more of that in between, I suppose, uh, as some of the A and S tier civs have. So starting off, we have the Burmese. Burmese have great Monk Rush, uh, one of the best in the game, getting cheaper, 50% uh, cheaper text is a huge bonus, and they have a wide open tech tree, only missing a couple upgrades there, I believe. Uh, and then they have Arambai, which is a pretty solid, unique unit. It could open up some uh, some strategies like double castle Arambai, or even just getting Arambai to get to the map control. Uh, they also get really nice infantry with the plus three attack in the late game, plus one per age, of course, making their Halberdier and their champions uh, a, a, pretty strong, um, a pretty strong unit to go for. Uh, and then they also get access to Bombard Cannon, some decent siege with Onager. Um, I don't know, it just feels like a, a pretty smooth civilization uh, overall. You also get Elephants and, uh, and Hussars and Cavalier, but that's pretty whatever. But you get fully upgraded cavalry for the most part. Um, and, and I don't know, it just feels like they, they have pretty decent options. I think the one downside to uh, Burmese is that they don't really have... They don't really have a good answer to... I don't know, I just feel like they don't have a good answer to range, like fast range units. Because, like, the only answer you have to fast range units is, is Onager, basically. Um, and Onager can get countered by a lot of other civs as well, very easily. So, missing the armor on the skirmishers makes your, like, we like late game kind of weak. And I just feel like, I, I just feel like you're dying to a lot of, a lot of archer civs with Burmese. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just not imagining a way to, to play around that. But I, I just feel like you're, you're, like, our blessed bomber cannon should do really well against Burmese very often. And... You can try to open cav with them, and they do have a good economy with their, their wood saving. Um, but uh, I, I don't know, I just feel like you might run into some problems there. So definitely uh, one of the weaknesses in my opinion. Um, but you know, it's overall a pretty smooth sieve. Uh, next up we have Celts actually. Celts are an interesting one. I, I was thinking about A tier for Celts. Great economy with the you know extra, extra fast woodcutters. Great siege, uh, really powerful in the late game. I, I don't know, I just feel like... I feel like the lack of bracers is a, a bit hindering Celts. Maybe I'm putting a bit too much emphasis on that once again. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, they're a bit of a one-trick pony. Kind of remind me of Slavs, where they're just really good boom into Halb and Siege. Uh, about the same thing. In fact, I think if I put Slavs here, I should put Celts there as well. Uh, but but, Cal but Slavs have bloodlines and, um, and really strong cavalry as well on top of Celts. So I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Slavs are still a bit better. They have a bit, bit more options with the Boyars as well. Celts feel a little bit too one-dimensional with the siege and um, siege and, and infantry, so for that reason, I had to drop them down to B tier. I think I'm happy with it there. Uh, next up, we have the uh, Chinese. Yeah, Chinese is just a super flexible sieve. They're missing redemption now after the recent changes, so uh, they lost a, a decent option to to some uh, siege pushes and castleage. But they still have really strong combinations like you know Chukunu late game with light cab or Chukunu. Uh, Skirm, Siege Ram with Bomber Tower, something like that's going to be really strong uh, overall. Uh, they also have really good economy and, uh, and and a decent start as well. And they can contest the Relics with ease as well because they get off uh, with, a, with a, a decent start to run Castle. You have a lot, a lot of uh, resources saved uh, or a lot of extra resources because you have those two extra villagers. So I, I don't know. I just feel like they're an overall decent civ. The problem with Chinese for me, though, is that they die to Hab Onager. Um, they don't have redemption or bomber cannon, and that's a big, big, um, you know, big disaster sign versus civs like Celts and Slavs who can really go for the Halb Onager in, in a big way, and uh, and Chinese can can have a lot of trouble dealing with it. Remember, arena is a lot about space, and Halb Onager is just one of the best strategies to take away space from your opponents and protect, you know, Halbs to protect the Onagers and then Onagers to take away a lot of space, and then Chebs to push forward and take out buildings, basically. Uh, next up, we have Incas. Incas is an interesting one. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Burmese, if I can find the civilization here. Incas, there it is. Reminds me a bit about Burmese. Like, it kind of has tools to counter everything. Eagle Warriors are really strong, uh, really versatile. They have pretty decent monks. Their economy is nothing special, but they get off, you know, to a decent start. They have faster building farms than the extra llama, which is two decent bonuses. And they save a little bit on the housing space as well. Uh, but then they have late game Kamuks, which are very strong, hard to deal with, um, especially with the extra pierce armor. Fully upgraded skirmishers, slingers, which counters a lot of the infantry, very strong, hard to deal with, and then onagers as well come in clutch. So 
I don't know, it feels like Incas have a pretty solid death ball with like Kamiuk, Slinger, Monks, Onagers, and Trebs. Like, if you can get Relics with the Sip, which you can, because you have Eagle Warrior available to you, which is really strong to contest Relics. If you can get Relics with the Incas, like 4 or 5 Relics, let's say 4, um, you can go into some crazy death balls with them late game. And I feel like they have some pretty solid matchups overall uh, as well. So, I don't know, Incas definitely something to look out for, uh, in my opinion. Um, okay, so that's going to be Incas. Next up, it's going to be the Mayans. Kind of similar reasons. No, no never mind. I'm not going to say similar reasons to the Incas. It's actually completely different. Uh, Mayans just have really strong late game options with Plumed Archer and, and Eagles. Very powerful. Uh, and they have a really good economy as well. Um, you know, they have longer lasting resources, which uh, is just a huge eco bonus. I've talked about this in previous tier lists. Um, and they also have the Eagle Warrior available, which lets them contest the relics with ease. And they also have the Plumed Archer for the Castle Age and the, for the Imperial Age that lets them get the map control and uh, potentially a very cheap and solid and effective uh, unit in the early imp as a backline unit, I guess you can say. The problem with Mines is that they're late imp. Not the best. They're also very gold heavy, like gold dependent. They don't have the best trash. They have like no bonuses for trash. They only have Halberdier and Skirm fully upgraded. That's it. Um, and uh, they don't have the best options in, in the way of Monks and Siege as well. So. If Plumes and Eagles are not going to win the game with like Seedram as well, then you're probably going to lose the game. And they have heavy, heavy Scorpions, I believe. Um, I'm not even sure about that as a decent option as well. Um, but I don't know. It just feels like uh, it just feels like if you don't have Eagles and, and Plumes doing the damage early on, you're going to run out of gold and you're going to therefore lose the game. Um, so yeah, Mayans is, is good in certain situations, but kind of has some tricky matchups. Most notably the Celts, I think, that comes to mind. Um, See, John, like opening Onager with Celts is just insane to counter the opening of Mayans, and then switching into Void Raiders is just completely blows out Mayans uh, to counter their egos, of course. Uh, okay, so that's going to be the Mayans, and then next up, I've got the Mongols. Uh, Mongols is an interesting one. Um, I think Mongols, I don't know exactly where I put them, but I, if they feel strong. The reason I put them so low, though, is because I feel like they get outpaced by some of the other civs. So Mongols get a nice early game bonus with. Uh, you know, faster deer and boar hunt uh, gather rates, which lets you then go into a really nice uh, scout rush to, co to contest the relics if you want to, or you can also go manga that to contest the relics, um, and, and then you can just room behind it, of course. The late game composition is just manga that hassar, maybe some siege ram. They also have you know options like siege onager with you know faster moving siege onagers, pretty solid stuff. Uh, you know, with mongols there. Um, I think I missed the sieve as well. I missed the sieve, but I'll go back to it. It's okay. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so they have really strong, strong options in the late game. The big problem with Mongols, though, is that they don't have the best eco bonus in Castle Age to, to carry them to those extensive options. So versus a sieve, like, for example, like Malay, you might just get completely outpaced. Malay will be an Imperial Age while you're still like, you know, halfway up to Imperial Age, and then you're going to lose your castles. You're going to get trapped down, which doesn't, which then you're not able to even get to Mangadai. And if you can't get to Mangadai with Mongols, it feels pretty lackluster. So uh, M Mongols has really good potential, but it's kind of hard to get there a lot of the times. So that's my problem with them. Uh, okay, we missed a sieve actually. It's Ethiopians. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. Let's put Ethiopians uh, right here. Yeah, there we go. Ethiopians. Uh, Ethiopians are actually really good. So they get the extra 100 food and 100 gold af you know, after every age, which lets you get a really smooth start. Remember, on Arena, you don't need to do Loom. In fact, most players don't get Loom in the early game, if, if not all Arena players at the top level don't get Loom, uh, which makes you have 100, 100 uh, gold to start, and Ethiopians give you an extra 100 gold when you get to uh, Castledge. This lets you go straight to Castledge without even needing a mining camp and go for a straight boom. You also then have options to, instead of doing that, you just use the resources, go for a standard build, and then have an extra like few hundred resources to contest the relics. Very strong bonus. Go for crossbows or, you know, scouts into light cap to contest the relics. The choice is yours. And then for late game, you have great Arbalest opening. Bombard Cannon Arbalest is great to open with. Uh, you have free pikemen, which let, you know leads to a smooth transition into halberdiers. And then you have great siege options. Torsion Engine with Bombard Cannon, Siege Rams. Uh, sorry, Siege Onagers, then you have Siege Ram and Heavy Scorpion. You have such good Siege uh, siege options. Uh, and then obviously the the Shotel Warrior is in the toolbox as well. So uh, Ethiopians is, feels like one of those civs that can um, that can really pack a punch with their with their different options. And they have the eco bonus to kind of help you get there. So I, I really like Ethiopians. Maybe even an, an, an A tier civ. I can see the arguments for it. Uh, so next up we have going to be the Vikings. Vikings remind me a little bit of um chinese yeah i think chinese and vikings are very similar they have fantastic economies great economies um the problem is their late game is a little bit lacking so 
uh vikings and, it's, and also kind of like mines as well kind of the mines chinese and, and vikings fall in the same category great economies great early imp options however once you get to late imp they have no bomber cannon and no redemption monks so you have very little options to counter onagers very difficult to counter onagers their, their cavalry isn't that special as well the vikings are going to have a tough time dealing with uh some sort of like uh onager arblast or onager bomber cannon uh arblast some some mix of like siege with arblast compositions are a nightmare for vikings like super hard to deal with so i feel like if you're not able to close out the game fast with vikings you're gonna lose the game that's just how it's gonna be so uh you know the free wheelbar and, ha and hand card is very nice but you're kind of on a time with this a lot of the time so just keep that in mind but it's still very powerful because those eco bonuses are just so strong that it can put you in a position to close out the game before the late game comes in so that's gonna be it for my b, b tier sips we're gonna move on to the c tier my mouth is getting a bit dry and i have to speed this up i once again apologize for how long it's taken hopefully you guys are enjoying the, you know the insightful uh discussion at least and uh a little bit about what i think about the sips okay this year we have the Koreans. Koreans are an interesting one because they have a lot of decent options. Actually, I'm gonna take off the headset. I don't really need it. Okay. Um, Koreans have a lot of interesting options. Like uh, war wagons, obviously the first thing that comes to mind, but more so than that, uh, they have siege onagers with an extra range in the late game. They also have free towers and towers with extra range, which is really good for arena. It lets you kind of squeeze your opponent in. Um, and they get cheaper wood wood uh, wood, vill uh, wood villagers. <laughs> they get cheaper uh, wood units. So overall, Koreans feel like uh, a pretty pretty unique set with with some of the options that they can go for. Uh, and they have a decent boom as well. I, I mean, I, I think there's no reason not to put it in B tier. Actually, um, I think I think Koreans can be B tier sieve. I think their monks are pretty lackluster, but um, aside from that, they don't really have any any big downsides. They have terrible cavalry, which is I guess a, a pretty decent downside. Um, but in general, they're, they're pretty solid. I think they're just missing. They don't have the best of of economies behind everything, so they might get outpaced by some of the B tier sieves. But I can see arguments for B tier. I was thinking of putting them up, but uh, eh. you know what? That's you know what. Koreans are up there. They they get bomber cannons as well. Uh, they get bomber cannons as well, so they're actually very solid. Uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Koreans in B tier. Yeah, they're very solid. They have a lot of good options. Saving on 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 um on military units, the wood is really good, and they have great siege for late game. So, uh, in my opinion, they're definitely not bad. Let's put them at B tier for now. And then the war wagons is a nice uh, two box unit to have as well in some some cases. Next up, I'm gonna have the Bulgarians. So that's the first C tier of the Bulgarians. So. Uh, Bulgarians have a decent boom. They save 50 stone on every town center, so it lets you go for like some big four town center um, booms without having to mine stone. It's not a bad bonus. It's not too bad. Um, let, you know, lets you go for a fast four town center boom, and you get to go scout to contest relics. It's pretty generic though. It doesn't really have any extra bonuses for that. Um, but in late game, you have access to conics, the unique unit, which is not too bad. It's pretty strong in some situations, although it does get countered by monks quite nicely. Um, and then you have uh, stars with stirrups, which is a really good option. And then you also get fully upgraded skirmishers. But the, the main unit, you know, the main unit you probably want to go for in late game is some of their siege. Like they get uh, siege onager and siege ram, which is you know really solid. Um, and I feel like, you know, and, and also a really nice upgraded cav archers as well. So I feel like if you do some some sort of mix of uh, onagers, cav archers, and hussars, you can get uh, off to a really nice um, a, a really nice composition with Bulgarians. So something to keep in mind there um and and not not bad not not too hard to get into that kind of composition uh because you have that uh that decent boom as well next up we have the huns so huns are gonna be i, I feel it's bad to put them in seats here but they really don't get that many bonuses for arena i mean they have a, a smooth economy because you don't need to build houses it also saves you space which is pretty important in arena but the late game is pretty one-dimensional. Like they can only do cavalry and, and siege ram. Basically, they don't have access to onager even. They have pretty lackluster halberdiers. Uh, their skirmishers are not fully upgraded. There's just a lot of problems with them. Their monks are not that great. In fact, pretty bad. Um, so it just feels like Huns don't offer that much in terms of options. The one unique option that Huns do have is the Tarkins, which can be really good to counter archer civilizations. So I can see some sort of argument for that one. Um, but other than that, you're basically forced into a heavy cav archer hussar composition in late game. Uh, what's nice about Huns is that you do get faster stable production to contest the relics in the cast lich. That's definitely decent. So, C tier sieve, pretty generic, but it does have an eco bonus that's pretty solid. So, uh, definitely in the C tier. Uh, very similar to Huns is going to be Indians. Again, pretty solid eco bonus. 
Um, you know, good at contesting relics, but it just doesn't have a lot of good units in the late game. M Camels can, is rarely great in Arena because you're going to be running into Halb Siege a lot of the times. Their cow archers are pretty good, but it's like just above average cow archers basically. Um, and uh, they don't really get that many good options late game. I mean, they have Bomber Can, they have Gunpowder, and that's about it. Like, I, I can't think of anything that's like that special. Elephant Archer is a meme. Like, it's just going to get destroyed by uh, by monks anyways most of the time. So uh, Indians is one of those that has good units, but uh, sorry, good economy, but doesn't really have the best units long term in my opinion. Um, and, and it's actually missing Siege Ram, so the Siege isn't great as well. So they have Bomber Cannon, which is a redeeming factor, but not 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 too impressive there. Next up is going to be the Japanese. Japanese has a pretty solid economy. They also have really nice Monks, which is uh, decent for Castle Age uh, and the early Imperial Age. Uh, and they also get really good tr the trash units. So having like Halberdier and Skirmishers fully upgraded and, and the Halberdiers also um, attacking faster, it's a pretty nice bonus. Um, they have a decent, um, you know, quote unquote, uh, fast death ball with like help Oranger with monks behind and uh, and the trebs that can unpack and repack very fast. Uh, it just makes for a decent composition in late game uh, on this uh, on this map. But uh, the reason I put them on C tier is because they're they're kind of lacking a powerhouse unit. Like they're, they feel like they're good at a lot of things. They even have the Yasama Towers. They're good at a lot of things, but they're not great at anything in particular. And I feel like, I feel like in Arena, being good at one thing in particular makes for a better civilization because in, in a map like arena you're often able to just boom into that thing you're good at whereas japanese you're booming into like a combination of things which is generally not as powerful if i'm making any sense here so uh, yeah you're just missing a, a powerful option i feel with Jap with japanese although they are pretty um pretty versatile and a decent economy uh, next up we have the Magyars. So Magyars completely opposite to Japanese. Magyars have great units, but you have a hard time getting there. You know, a lot of the times they kind of remind me a little bit about Mongols, where uh, you have a good time scout rushing, you get free forging, and you get cheaper scouts. So good time contesting the relics with some scouts uh, and some monks, no problem. Uh, the Magyar monks are not uh, not great, not impressive at all. Uh, however, the Magyar late game is great. Magyar Hussar plus heavy cow archer with recurve bow, giving them plus one attack and plus one range makes for a really good composition late game the problem with maggers why they're a bit weaker than mongols is in my opinion uh the recurve bow uh cow archers are slightly weaker than mangadai because they don't have the siege bonus so they're slightly less versatile than mangadai i should say uh and also uh I, and i guess you have the maggar hussar to compensate there so it's not the end of the world uh but the main uh the main issue with with, with the maggers uh, i actually it slipped my mind but i <laughs> i had it on the tip of my tongue uh, what, what was the problem Oh yeah, they have terrible siege. Yeah, that's the problem. So, uh, the, you know, the difference between, uh, between Mongols and Magyars is the siege. If if Magyars had better siege, let's say Siege Ram and Siege Onager, I can bump them to B tier because their late game is great. But missing the siege uh, is, is a pretty big deal. Um, their labs, their labs, their halves are pretty lackluster as well, missing the last armor. So nothing too special there. Um, I don't know. Ma Magyars are decent. They also have Paladins, which comes into play sometimes, but nothing too uh, too insane there. Uh, Paladins are not great on Arena, by the way. I'm going to like put that out there. Uh, okay, next up we have Malians. Uh, Malians has great economy, and uh, they ha they're, they're, pretty mu they're, they're pretty flexible in Castle Age. They can Monk Rush if they want to. They can Boom if they want to. They have Gibettos if they want to. Uh, they have Pikemen with a lot of Pierce Armor if they want to. It just feels like they have great options overall. Uh, however, when you go to the Imperial Age, that's, I feel like their options start to thin. Like... Uh, they have good cavalry. They're missing bracers, so range units aren't going to do much. Good cavalry, but not great. Just like Farimba Cav is not amazing uh, on Arena because you don't have the option of mobility. Uh, and then Gibedos can be good against some compositions, but not against a lot. I mean, it, it counters Hab Oranger, which is a good thing. So Gibedos is already decent uh, as it is. But um, I don't know. I just feel like they don't have any like any powerful, powerful option. They kind of remind me a little bit about Japanese. But they do have the the, the champions, a lot of Pierce armor and the Gibberos and decent monks and decent light calves. So, oh, and good light calves. So, a lot of decent options, but nothing too uh, too too crazy. But they have a really good economy. So maybe Malians can be B tier as well. I just feel like they kind of fall short of some of the B tier options here. Uh, but definitely a decent sieve. Uh, next up, we have the Saracens. Um, Saracens are interesting. I mean, their market can can lead to some really good fast imps. Um, or faster imps rather, uh, where they can open Arbless. They also have Siege Ram uh, and Siege Oranger, so really strong Siege. Great Monks on Saracens as well. Kind of just missing uh, an overall eco bonus. Like the market's decent, but it's not great in my opinion. 
um and uh, and not a lot of bonuses to help contest their relics either like again you kind of just have to get creative with the market there so i, I guess in the hands of a creative player the saracens can be really good uh however i, I just feel like they're they're not that uh special not that not that fast to get to their good options and uh, and their late game is not that that impressive sure you have like you have a lot of options available siege their heavy cab archers are pretty good and mamluks can be okay in certain situations uh, you don't really have a lot of the you know a lot of strong bonuses that make them stand out. So they'll just be like a pretty generic siege ram, heavy cav archer, hussar sieve with siege archer and bomber cannons that they can second to, and good monk. So a lot of options in late game, nothing that really pops out, and you know missing an eco bonus to really get there consistently. So C tier, maybe B tier, but I, I put them in C tier for now. Uh, next up, I have the Spanish. So Spanish is a weird one because. Conquistadors can be so strong in certain situations, but also so weak to skirmishers like and monks, and it just feels like I don't know. Maybe I'm just not playing Spanish properly, but um, I don't think they're much of a threat, um, and I feel like they're missing an eco bonus to really um, get them to a, a strong late game. And the conquistadors feel a bit underwhelming. I feel like people know how to defend them against them these days, and again, you know, just conquistadors taking extra damage from skirmishers being introduced in DE makes the unit a lot weaker in Chaos Lich. So with the nerf to conks, the indirect nerf to conks, oh no, direct nerf to conks, uh, like that, uh, it's, um, it's, it makes their castage way weaker. And sure, they have a really versatile Imperial Lich. Spanish get fully upgraded trash, supremacy bills, and great monks with decent siege. Um, I just feel like you have a hard time getting there and they don't have anything that, that special as well going for them in late game, uh, besides the supremacy bills, of course. That's going to wrap up my C tier here. I have just a few more sieves to go, so stay with me, boys. For the D tier, I'm going to open up with the, the Italians. Italians, they don't have that many bonuses. They're mainly a water sieve, so a lot of the bonuses get lost like that. They get cheaper advancing to ages, which saves you like 500 resources spread over like 30 minutes, basically. So it's nothing that special. Um, and they don't really have powerful units late game. They're missing good siege. They have decent monks. Condos can be okay sometimes. But other than that, you're basically stuck playing with like our blessed bomber cannon, and after that, not much. So, uh, and, and you have fully upgraded Hussar, so you have like decent options, decent to below average economy, and not a lot of like no, no power unit basically. You have no like big power unit except Genovese crossbow versus certain matchups, but even that's not that impressive. So, I don't know, Italians are a D tier sieve, they're okay, but nothing special basically. Next up, I have Persians. Persians have a really good economy, a really good boom. The problem is they're not really getting a, a, any great uh, early game bonuses, so they don't really help you contest relics. Um, and then they don't also they also don't let, really have a good late game composition. Like the only thing you can really do with Persians is like Paladin. Like other than Paladin, what can you really do? Trash bows are not that impressive. Sea jumps is nice to have. You don't have siege onagers. You have bomber cannon, which is decent. You're missing bracer. Um, I don't know. I just feel like Persians are really not that strong anymore. After they got nerfed and that they don't, they no longer get the faster working town center and dark age. I feel like they're just not as strong anymore and, and not worth considering uh, in in most arena games, in my opinion. Um, you might be able to use their strong economy to to beat certain civs, but you're gonna just die to Halb Onager a lot of times. Their monks are very weak as well. So Persians, not the best composition late game, and their eco bonus doesn't help at the right time, in my opinion, to collect those relics. Next up, I have Portuguese. Similar reason to Italians. However, Portuguese do actually have a really good late game composition. Um, the ballistics on the gunpowder makes their bomber cannons pretty decent and bomber towers, of course. So you can kind of come up with a decent powerhouse with maybe organ gun, bomber cannon, bomber tower with maybe halbs in front. I can see that working out, but uh, they don't really get an eco bonus. And uh, so they kind of fall, fall flat a lot of the times. The Fitiora is not a, a, a terrible idea with Portuguese, going for like some fast and Fitiora play. I've seen it do okay certain times, but uh, I don't know. And they also have good monks. So Portuguese are, are not bad, but uh, just feels like nothing special and no eco bonus to really get into those good options or late game options. Uh, okay, that's going to be it for the D tier. And now finally for the last three sieves. Sorry guys, you suck. <laughs> Berbers, Goths, and Tatars. So where do I start? Berbers, let's just go alphabetically. Uh, Berbers get very little bonuses. No eco bonus besides fast moving vills, which is just like a decent bonus at best. I don't, I don't value that value it that high, honestly. Um, and then they get cheaper cavalry starting in Castle Age, which is not that impressive. Cavalry is not great on arena. 
Uh, and then late game options, they have count marches, which are really good, but again, very expensive and hard to get to. Without an eco bonus, you're going to get outpaced very fast. And also, count marches kind of die to monks and to halb siege. So, Berbers get Berbers dies to the most common arena rushes, which is halb siege or monk siege. And they die to both of those uh, pretty hard. So, I don't know. I, I just feel like they have nothing special going for them. If you somehow man manage to get to late game, you have Camel Archer with Hussar, cheaper Hussar, which is actually pretty strong with Bomber Cannon behind it, maybe as your siege. Um, but uh, you're going to probably die most often before you even get to, to that stage. And their bonus to con you know that helps you contest the relics is cheaper scouts, which is not that bad, but also not that great. Okay, so that's going to be it for Berbers. Um, and they also have very lackluster monks, which is a big deal in Arena. Monks are huge. Um, Goths is the next one. Very little eco bonus. In fact, no eco bonus because free loom isn't really an eco bonus in Arena. No one even does loom, so you're not really saving anything there. Mm, you're just kind of getting a free 15 gold later on. People do loom in the late game, and at that point, it's not a big deal. Uh, and um, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of disrespecting their eco bonus here with the faster boar gathering or faster boar killing, but that usually just ruins your boar lure more than anything. And yeah, Goths are just way too one-dimensional. You know if a Goth player booms, he's going to come out with infantry. All their bonuses are for the late game, and they only can do infantry, which will just get destroyed by like some sort of heavy siege composition, like siege. Uh, Champion Onager would just completely wipe out Goths most of the time. Monks counters Goths and Castlage as well, so Huskos aren't even a big factor there. And Goths get no bonuses to help contest relics. So overall, very weak civ in my opinion, um, and very easy to counter on Arena. Um, uh, even though at lower level it's probably great to boom with the husk roll halb, but at high level it gets destroyed most more often than not, I would say. Uh, next up we have the Tatars. So last but not least, the Tatars. Um, hill bonus is fantastic. I love the Tatar hill bonus. Unfortunately, guys, there's no hills in Arena, no hills whatsoever. So Tatars lose complete access to one of their um, one of their main bonuses. The the extra sheep or longer lasting sheep is not bad. I guess you can do something with it. But then you don't really get any bonuses to help contest relics after that, besides the sheep bonus, which isn't that amazing. Um, uh, and then their late game composition is not that special. Their monks aren't great. That planters are pretty meh. And then going for like Hassar Cav Archers is not terrible um, with the extra Pierce Armor. But uh, it, it kind of dies to help Siege more often than not as well. So uh, I, I don't know. It feels like Tatars are just lacking... Lacking... A lot of the essential arena things that you need and also their halves are terrible so you don't even have the option to go for a good halb onager play so i feel like the tars is just lacking a lot of things you need on arena also their siege is pretty lackluster missing siege onager and siege ram so nothing too uh too much to brag there for for the tars and yeah that's gonna be it for this tier list video so i've talked tons i need to get some water now i'm actually dehydrated but i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, let me know if you guys want to see more tier list video uh, videos in the future. Let me know what you what you thought about my list. If you disagreed, if you agreed, let me know in the comments below what you thought and what your opinions are. And uh, that's going to be it for me, man. So make sure to check out the Twitter and Instagram links and as well as my Twitch and Discord. All links in the description. Take a look there. And uh, if you made it to the end of the video, pat yourself on the back. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.